This is the request to make a user an administrator in GitLab. If you could achieve a CSRF here, it would be really, really dangerous. But there is a CSRF protection header and also it's a put method, so CSRFs should not be possible here. But with a very clever trick, Johan Carlson found a way to achieve a CSRF-like attack not only on this one endpoint, making him an administrator, but on all put routes in the whole GitLab. Watch this video until the end to learn how you can also find this vulnerability. Enjoy! CSRFs rely on the fact that the browsers append cookies automatically to requests. And for the purpose of this video, let's leave same site and other things aside. So one of the ways to prevent CSRFs is to use a custom header like X CSRF protection. It's robust because in the browser, there is only the mechanism to automatically append cookies. And there is no mechanism that will force the browser to automatically append a custom header like this. So CSRF in this case is not possible. Or saying more precisely, it's not possible to create such a request from scratch on the attacker website. But how about if we don't create a request from scratch, but we take one of the requests that are sent anyway, and we just redirect them from their original location to the endpoint which we want to CSRF. But what do I even mean by that and how can we do it? To answer this question, let's take a look at the Sentry integration with GitLab. GitLab is primarily used for developing web applications, which includes fixing bugs and errors. Some of those errors can be sent automatically by tools like Sentry integration. Then someone has to take a look at all the errors from Sentry and decide whether they are just false positives and they should be ignored. But if they are not, they probably have to create an issue on GitLab so developers take care of it. But GitLab developed an integration with Sentry that removes this step in the middle and allows to show Sentry errors in GitLab itself. You just have to integrate it either with the public instance of Sentry or with a self-hosted one. Then those errors will be shown on the list when someone can, among others, resolve or ignore them. This is the request that will be sent under the hood. It contains the ID of the error. It should come from Sentry, so there shouldn't be anything malicious here. But you can also use a self-hosted instance of Sentry. And what Johan did was he created his own server that behaved like Sentry, but it returned errors with IDs that looked like this. They contain the dot dot slash sequence. You are probably familiar with the path traversal vulnerability. You send some request to the server with this dot dot slash sequence and you can read a file from the server. But it is not the attack we are talking about today. Today we are talking about client-side path traversal. Because what will happen later is these errors will be shown on the list as legit ones. But when someone clicks the resolve button, this is the request that would be sent. And after the dot dot slash sequences will be resolved, this path will look like this. So it's the same address as the request we saw previously. Albeit we don't control the body of the request, but we can use parameters inside the URL. So whenever a higher privileged member of the same team or GitLab support would click this button on your malicious error with a malicious ID, the request would be sent to an arbitrary location which you would choose. If you would be attacking a higher privileged member of the same team, you could, for example, bump your privileges and make yourself an admin. Considering this affects most, if not all, put routes on GitLab, 
you can pretty much do anything with this. So whenever you control some parts of the requests sent to the API, whether you control them directly, like from the URL parameters, or indirectly, like here from a third party website that seems to be trusted and secure, try injecting the dot dot slash character to see whether you can control the location of the API request or not. Just make sure to include the hashtag after just to discard the rest of the URL that will be appended. Learning from reports of other hackers is great, but you know what's better? Asking them, how did they get to it and trying to learn their whole methodology? And that's exactly what I did because I interviewed Johan, the author of this amazing bug, in the latest episode of my Bug Bounty Reapers Discussed podcast. I encourage you to listen to this episode and I promise you will not regret this. You can find it both on YouTube and on major podcasting platforms. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.